I've been reading from this book for a year now and so I keep trying to mix it up and see what I can find in here that's new and I decided tonight I'm just going to sample some poems. There are all sorts of uh, collections or series poems in here so I'm just going to read a few from each series. Um, I'll start off by saying this book is haunted. There, there, are lots of, uh, there are lots of ghosts and elegies in here. So the first couple poems I'm going to read are from that sort of section of, of elegies. There's this wonderful sense of validation. There's that, you know, that you've sent in your work, that, you know, somebody has seen it, has responded to it, you know, and, and says, you know, we think you're doing great work and we'd like to support you. Like that, that's an amazing feeling as an artist. Um, I definitely think some of the encounters with other artists, uh, again, we sort of tend to be, at least if you're a poet, sort of these solitary pockets of work. And so, you know, meeting up with other artists in other genres and seeing what they're doing and talking to them has just been a really wonderful experience. And so the hoodie stands witness for Trayvon Martin. I was built for bodies like his, between boy and man, sauntering in angles he couldn't hold but swung his limbs from, careful, cool in every step. I can tell you the story of him, unexceptional. He put change and candy into my pockets, the necessary jangle of keys and cell phone hushed in the sock of me. I watched him from the soft pile he made of me on the floor of his messy adolescent room where I lay beside his sneakers and backpack. He did his homework with chat windows open. White headphones hooked him into some steady beat. That day, he was thinking of nothing in particular. He was quiet in his skin, tucked into the shade of me. He was an easy embrace until an old ancestral fear lay its white shadow across us like an omen. I can tell you his many hairs raised in warning beneath me. His armpits funked me up with terror. His saunter slipped into a child's unsteady totter under the weight of a history staggering behind him, mad with its own power. He clung to me then, wholly unmanned a baby clutching his blankie. He pulled me close and I stroked his head, caressed the naps he had brushed the waves that morning. I felt him brace his bones beneath me, his heart a thousand beating drums. The bullet ripped through us like a bolt of metal lightning. His blood Losing its purpose ran into me and I wished we were truly a single body that I could have held its rush and flow like a second sweaty skin. I can tell you how his spirit slipped out, like steam from cooling water, slowly fading by degrees until he stilled. I feel like one of the most important things to art is risk. And so what I was able to do with my grant was take a workshop with a really wonderful writer um, out at the Fine Arts Work Center in Provincetown. It's, it was a week-long workshop on, you know, developing your sort of prose writing as a, you know, so I was able to sort of experiment with a different genre. Again, go to this wonderful community, study with this artist, uh, pay the, you know, the fees required to do that. Um, and so that was just really a great experience for me and um, both learn how to think about teaching, which is, you know, also what I do and, um, and become a better writer. So that was wonderful. And, and I think I would have hesitated to invest as much money as that opportunity cost if I hadn't had the support from the grant. So that was, that was wonderful. I'm grateful for that.